Good morning, and welcome to the Church of St. Paul the Apostle. Today our church celebrates the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings and lyrics for today's hymns can be found on the Church of St. Paul the Apostle app. Please stand and join in singing our processional hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. We worship as we live our lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We have reached the 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and we give thanks that we have made it thus far. And for those who have gone before us, in faith in Christ, we've commended them, commended them to heaven, and so all is well in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We pause and in a spirit of contrition and humility, we depend upon the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of its stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower, and he hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to be done for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenant farmers and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain the produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones. But they treated them the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper time. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone of the building. 
by the Lord this has been done, and it is wonderful in your eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Cain and Abel, Joseph and his envious brothers, King Saul's paranoia and jealousies against the shepherd David, arguments among the apostles as to who is the greatest, Peter regarding the beloved disciple in John's Gospel with resentment and envy, Judas Iscariot, a man of constant suspicion, cynicism, and pride, and willfully attempts to manipulate Jesus in his own image to the point of betrayal. Centuries, centuries of the promulgation of anti-Semitism, Catholic and Protestant wars of religion, Pope Alexander VI, the Borgia Pope, filled with corruption and greed. Even what we take great pride in, the Constitution of the United States, filled with so many great and good things, yet it willfully, willfully ignored the outrage of slavery. The United States Supreme Court issues, issued that dreadful Dred Scott decision, confirming freed slaves as still property that had to be returned to their masters. It was decision that, a decision that caved in to the political concerns, and it was not about justice at all. And then there's the irrefutable sins that led to the Great Depression, the suffering of millions of people throughout the world, and did not that result in a Second World War? And equally egregious, the greed that led to the economic collapse of 2008. And don't we see the direct correlation between poverty and suffering people and the ideologies that erupted, such as fascism, the Nazi party, communism, dictatorship, even the terrorism of radical Islam. And what about us, the scandals in the church, in sports, in medicine, in scouts, and in our schools, depriving millions of trust in institutions that were meant to serve and to educate. Don't we realize that all this history and all that's even going on right now in our current crisis is a disavowal, a total rejection of four, four, of the great commandments. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's possessions. Two, thou shall not steal. Three, thou shall not kill. Four, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no false gods before me. All of these thwarting of the commandments are indicted by today's readings. Yes, the parable that Jesus told was meant to reflect how people rejected him. Jesus is the fulfillment of the covenant at that time. But the application doesn't stop there because the parable of the vineyard is a paradigm of everything we cave into, selfishness, entitlement, greed, sins of every people, every nation, sins that are against Jesus, even now, 
sins that are against Christ and his body. And we're his body. We inflict these upon ourselves as well. We are indicted like these vineyard workers because we continue to reject Jesus and the gospel. As the Hebrew prophets before him, Christ made it clear that humanity's achievements were not to be done at the expense of or subjugation of any person or any group. And furthermore, as we commemorate today the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, we are not to abuse the earth or its natural resources, or the animal kingdom, because we're all connected. Everything is in relationship to one another and in relationship to God. But we do have choices. We have faith to guide us. And we can be on our guard, careful not to give in not to descend into the reality of the vineyard's workers. It's time we have to accept that the gospel is countercultural. You know, we have put too much of our faith in too many princes of the world, too many idols, too many ideologies distract us from Jesus, Jesus who alone is our King and our God. Jesus tells us that there's tragic consequences for those who deny faith's reality. And what is faith's reality? That we and everything that we are and everything that we have is a gift from God. It's all gift. In gratitude, we are to cultivate exactly what St. Paul wrote in his letter. Whatever is true is to be our grounding. Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious. We, you know, we pray at every Eucharistic prayer at the altar. Grant us, O Lord, unity and peace. Well, doesn't that mean that we cooperate, that we collaborate with all peoples everywhere for a better earth and a more just and compassionate society? That's what unity means. Since Vatican II, the Catholic Church finally abandoned its triumphalism that the Catholic Church was the only church and that hell awaited from, to everybody outside the Catholic Church. It abandoned that kind of egotistical, prideful, antagonistic triumphalism in deference to a God greater than us, a God of mercy, a God of compassion, that a God who offers love to every ethnicity, every people of every faith, and every nation. It's time that we as individuals, members of imperfect families that we are, members of a fallible church, and yes, a fallible nation and a world, that we renew our commitment to advance the gospel, renew our commitment to make this kingdom here on earth as much as humanly possible by the grace of God. If we do not, Jesus' parable tells us there will be consequences. And the consequences won't only impact the poor, but future generations and the detriment of our very souls, my soul, your souls. Now is the time to cultivate a conscience of an extreme, radical daily dedication to Jesus, to love of God, to love of neighbor. Now is the time. And if it isn't, then we make hypocrites of ourselves every time we pray the Our Father. It's time for this hypocrisy to end. Last week, our Jewish brothers and sisters 
observed an entire day of atonement. Let atonement be ours today as well. Because this is the sign of our times. This is what the Catholic people need. Now, this is not disavowing the good that is in us. Of course there is good in us. Of course we and our nation and our world have done good things and great things. But faith it requires that we balance the knowledge of these good things with a constant acknowledgement of our sins and our failures. If we are to achieve the purpose for which God has made us. Enough of pride, enough of arrogance, enough of resentment and greed. Why don't we just cast them off to the devil, shall we? Our times demand a scrupulosity, a strong examination of conscience for us, for our nation, and for everyone else. For it is, if not, by the blessed assurance that it is a contrite heart that fortifies God's grace in us, we're all lost, lost. So may we pray that today's Word and Eucharist humble us, inflame in us a desire for the fire of the Holy Spirit and all the Spirit's gifts, and may we recommit ourselves to Jesus and Jesus' gospel and none other, so that through him, with him, and in him we may become what Jesus calls us to be. Light for the world. By prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let us make our requests known to our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church around the globe, may church leadership not be so concerned with its own power and security in the world 
but more focused on tending for God's people working in the vineyard. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear for the actual vineyards on the West Coast that have been destroyed by fire and others that continue to face destruction, for migrant harvest workers, for persons living in the region, and for the safety of firefighters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those suffering from the effects of co the COVID-19 virus, especially in our country, from the president and others in positions of power, to the poor who need the same treatment, for proper medical care for all God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from depression and addiction, and for their loved ones who worry for them, may they all be visited by the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the many engaged couples who have been forced to alter their sacramental celebrations due to the pandemic, may they have patience and experience the support of their families and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear For those who have died, especially Vincent Love, may they experience the fruits of the fullness of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we speak now to God in silence. May these be united to the intentions of our patron, St. Paul, and servant of God, Father Isaac Hecker. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy Dolan, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your faith-filled people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, 
the blessed apostles, St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And may we offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. A reminder for our reception of the Eucharist today, as always now, to 
observe proper distance between us. Will everyone from the north side on the, on the along the wall to come around first down the center aisle, followed by the people on the aisle on the north. While they're coming around, will please people from the south side along the wall come all the way around and wait at, to the, at the back of the church until the people in the center aisle have received the Eucharist and then followed from the, the far north, the people on the center north to come last. But remember, last and first, we're all one in Christ. Lastly, please keep your masks on, extend your hands to receive Jesus, and then uh, when you receive the Eucharist, go to one of the blocks on the side, uh, and then you may remove your mask to receive the Eucharist. Thank you so much for your patience in this and observing the proper distance to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. And for those at home, thank you for joining us in a true spiritual communion. We give thanks to all of you. Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. A few announcements. You love announcements, don't you? <laughs> you want to be seated? Sure. You're invited to bring your pets to our entryway in front of the church this afternoon for the St. Francis of Assisi Day Blessing of the Animals. It will begin at 2 o'clock. So at 2 o'clock, come outside the front of the church with your pooch or kitten or other <laughs> pet, and we'll be happy to celebrate their lives and their contribution to your love and care. Also, we have... Okay, we'll try again. Out at St. Paul's are having a fall mass, and it will be held Thursday evening at 7 p.m. They are our LGBTQ brothers and sisters, and we welcome anyone and everyone to celebrate with them. Next Saturday at 7 p.m. will be the second Out Loud event through both sacred music and secular music and spoken reflections out, out, out Loud aims to create a spiritual safe haven for our LGBTQ plus siblings to continue their healing journey and to renew or reclaim their faith and to live their most authentic lives without fear of judgment or discrimination. Performances and reflections will be live streamed on our parish Facebook page. Again, that's October 10th at 7 p.m. So you may attend live or on Facebook. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go forth in peace to love and serve God and one another in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord.